So what are the warning signs? Because, you know, you talked about it at, at the beginning, you know, you kind of look at, you know, family lineage, you know, like maybe, maybe your parents, or maybe sometimes it skips a generation. So we have that, you know, where we can just, you know, if we have some self-awareness, like look at our, look at our family and see if it's been a trend, but you know, not a lot of people are actually going to gonna do that. And, and, and also probably not at a young age, are you equipped to even be able to process that? So, so what are other warning signs? You know, it's not like we, we obviously don't have a lot of young, you know, young kids listening to this, but maybe with their children, or maybe, you know, maybe if, if, if they're already in it, like what are some signs that people could look for if they, to, to know that if they, if they do have an alcoholic's brain? Well, you, what you must know is the parents, okay? The parents know, the child doesn't. I didn't know at 9, 10, 11, 12, 34, 20. I didn't know. Nobody told me. Nobody, nobody had a conversation with me. So if your mom and dad to a teen, you know if there's alcoholism in your family, if you're a woman, or your husband's family and vice versa. You know there's been alcoholism and maybe addiction in the family. That's the warning sign. Dialogue is all I say to dialogue. Tell your 8, 9, 10, 11 uh, uh, year old kids about alcoholism and about how there's devastation in the family from the past and be careful now the age is 9 10 11 they're not going to think much of it but everything that's said and done to us everything we see and hear is filed away in the subconscious brain that's where the disease lives in the subconscious brain so it's going to be there and then when it happens they take the first drink and they feel different that's the warning sign to the child and you to monitor that first drink and and see if it's skipped a generation or it's caught your kid. And if your kid's 12 or 13, by the time it takes a first drink, watch the behavior, watch the isolation, watch the not coming down to dinner, you know, like you used to do, watch the time up, you know, off school, whatever it may be, there'll be a change of behavior that always is. I can spot an alcoholic from a mile away. You walk into the door, I can tell by looking at him, I tell him how he acts, how he sits down without even speaking to him. So there are lots of signs there for parents to look out. But start that dialogue early, guys. Are, are, is there anything that you can articulate? I, obviously, I know that this is due to, you know, your work of being, you know, working with thousands of addicts for the last 30 years that you can you can do that. But is there anything that you could share with us that, that you know, as far as like how to identify in it? How do they approach the room? How do they scan? How do they interact with other people? How do they sit? Are these are these signs that, you know, somebody like myself that maybe hasn't spent, you know, a lot of one on one time like. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, are there actual, you know, signs that we could see in their behavior? Uh, the, <clears throat> the drinking at parties and heavy drinking is one. The isolation is two. When you see somebody uh, shine away from the spotlight. So if, if there's a bunch of chairs and they sit at the back, that's also another sign. Don't like to talk in public. Don't like to draw attention to themselves. And this is the part when they know that they need alcohol to carry on through the life. So them signs are always there, especially the unkempt look uh, and the isolation. But yeah, people, alcoholics who are struggling tend to cow down, tend to stay small, uh, don't, don't mix in large groups. You know, the isolation is number one. We love to do that. So that's the case. That's the kind of stuff that the normal person, the layman person can look at, you know. And if you're, if you're mom and dad, then obviously you've got a better look from the isolation in the bedroom and the people I hang around with again. If you hang around with nine depressed people, you will become the tenth. So that's the other thing as well. Watch the friends that hang around. If they're known for drinking and, and drugging at an early age, then your kid may be in danger because what happens to the alcoholic brain that doesn't happen to the normal brain is where it shows up the same at a period of time that everyone's heavy drinking, everyone's hungover, everyone's just getting in this grade. But nine out of ten people with that will come out of that and go to college. The alcoholic can't come out of it. He is doomed for failure.